Welcome everybody to Live Meetings Updates 2021. Glad to have you guys here with us today while we share positive updates uh, as we move forward with in-person meetings uh, and uh, events. So I wanna let you know that these presentations that we're gonna be given today contain forward-looking statements. All statements other than the state, than statements of historical fact contained in this presentation, including statements regarding macroeconomic trends that we expect to influence our industry, expectations regarding the introduction of new processes, changes in the competitive landscape, and plans for growth or future operations are forward-looking statements. These forward-looking statements are only predictions and there are opinions which are subject to several risks, uncertainties, and assumptions. Remember, there are opinions. So please also note that we are not attorneys and the information we share in this meeting are our own opinions and we would request that you consult an attorney for any legal advice. Um, so without uh, further ado, I'd like to just kick us off. We all know, or you may know that you guys have been on this show for a while, that um, we have been providing these, uh, these meetings with the idea that um, you know, everything's been changing in the industry since March, really, of 2020. And we've been bringing industry friends and colleagues together from across the country to talk about how to move forward with in-person meetings with safety top of mind. And really, we plan to continue to offer these webinars and trying to help us get back to business. And the purpose of these is to share positive information. I also want to ask you guys that are on the show to make sure that if you are asking questions, that you ask them in a positive light. Or if you're sharing information in the chat, that you share them in a, in a positive light. The chat is used just specifically to make general comments. Um, if you are asking a question, which those of you that have been on the show before already know the format, but ask the questions in a Q&A section, I will personally be, be asking those questions live on the show. So you'll listen and I will, I'll actually send you a message that tells you I'm going to answer live. Um, and it looks like Maxine put in Minneapolis in there. I just sent her a message saying I'm answering live. And then I will click when I have answered it. So you'll get a message back to let you know that that has been answered. So please use the Q&A through this process. The purpose of this meeting really is to inspire, educate, and focus on forward move it, movement and on what is possible rather than what is not. So really want to make sure that before you exit the show today that you'll be provided with a short survey to complete and evaluate our performance. Um, please take a moment and complete that to let us know that we met our goals and we would really appreciate the feedback. I always appreciate the emails and the, um, you know, the personal uh, text messages and messages that I get along the way. So feel free to reach out to me as well. So let's talk about some of the upcoming uh, meetings that we have. So we have to start with digital destinations. We've been doing this now for about four months, really excited about it. It's live on Facebook and LinkedIn every Thursday at 11 o'clock Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. You do not need to register for this. All you need to do is like us on Meeting Sites Pro or Facebook or LinkedIn, um, like our Meeting Sites Pro page on Facebook or LinkedIn, and then go live with us when we go live at that time. We travel from across the country and around the world uh, two places to share how everybody's opening up. And not only from a standpoint of in-person meetings, but this is for vacation, business travel, site surveys. If you um, wanna check out a, a location for a survey, you can also get some great valuable information on that. And we do them literally live. So you get to see things that aren't available on the internet, just an exciting opportunity to learn more about what's happening uh, across the country. So the next thing I wanna bring up are these live meeting updates. We, again, we have them the second Thursday of every month. Our next one's February 11th. Please feel free to sign up for that. You can sign up for it now by scanning the QR code here. We've also dropping into the chat um, the actual link to go ahead and sign up for that, which reminds me, please check the chat throughout this whole program because we will be dropping resources. We will be dropping in contact information for our entire panel in there. And we would encourage you to connect with each of us. We are all in this together. And everybody that I bring on this show feels the same way I do about wanting to connect with people and help people out. So please feel free to connect with any of us. So let's now talk. I'm going to show you our Facebook and our LinkedIn pages, give you guys a chance to scan on those. Also, I talk about I started a page called Meetings Mean Business, and it's all about positive updates on in-person meetings. There's a lot of negative um, resources out there. And so I decided to start my own. <laughs> it's just positive updates, positive information, nothing negative to be shared on there as we try to inspire to help everybody move forward. So if you are on Facebook and you're looking for a great way to stay connected, I share a bunch of resources on that. 
weekly. And, um, and that's one great way to do it. And again, liking us on our Meeting Sites Pro page will also help you stay updated on when we're going live and when we're doing these shows. Last but not least, we've been doing these shows for a while and um, we've been able to provide them free. We know that the but this last year has been really challenging for the whole hospitality industry. And our intention with these virtual programs is to spread again, information, encourage positivity. And we understand in the current environment uh, and event registration is not feasible for everybody. So we haven't been doing it, but we aim to keep these free. And that said, we do incur fees in production, editing and managing of these programs. So we encourage everybody, if you have the ability to contribute, to contribute it. And we appreciate the donations. We've had several people who have donated over the last year. We have them listed there. I wanna just really thank the supporters who've, um, who've been supporting it, whether it's been just a $10 donation or a couple hundred dollar donation, it's all been appreciated. It really helps really in us being able to edit these videos to put them out for everybody to be able to have as enduring materials going forward. So um, the link for that's being dropped into the um, chat box now. Now I'd like to welcome our panelists. We're gonna um, start off with, um, I wanna say happy new year. Thanks everybody again for joining us. This is our first show in 2021. And um, again, our goal is to inspire, elevate, educate, and focus on forward movement. And with me here today to help with that is Jill Yurko from the Hilton Orlando Bonnet Creek and the Waldorf Astoria in Orlando. We have Travis Binkley from Visit Orlando and Greg Herning from Renaissance Newport, um, which is a property opening in February. I think it's on February 1st. So I'm super excited to have him on to be sharing a new product as well. Um, but before we get started with our panelists, I have put together a video. It's been a work in progress where I brought together um, some of my partners, in-house physicians. Those of you who've been on the show have heard um, that we were partnering with them to do a lot of uh, pre-event surveys. And we partnered with Hilton San Diego Bayfront to bring uh, this together for you to, so you can see how an advisory board meeting can be ex uh, executed with health and safety top of mind in this current environment. So here we go. Let's take a look. As Meeting Sites Pro looks to the return of in-person meetings, we recognize that health safety and security is vital. We have been strategizing practical and functional solutions to facilitate these live and hybrid meetings with safety top of mind throughout the planning process. We know every area and every meeting is different and have solutions for meetings big and small. In developing best practices for risk mitigation and safe meetings, Meeting Sites Pro has partnered with in-house physicians, an industry leader in the meetings and events COVID-19 response effort. Their services begin pre-meeting with the IHP attendee health screening tool and a self-declaration form. All attendees receive a link to the pre-meeting survey prior to travel and daily through the meeting. They are then directed through a series of screening questions and almost instantly after the survey, they will receive a text clearing them for entry or connecting them with an IHP team member for further evaluation. On arriving at the venue, our IHP approved attendees will notice a variety of health and safety measures in place. From masks on all hotel associates, to plexiglass shields, touches options, virtual tools, signage, and sanitizer throughout the building, we make sure to partner with hotels that are dedicated to safety. We follow local distancing guidelines while requiring all attendees to wear masks. These practices will be no surprise to attendees as pre-meeting communication is distributed, outlining all safety measures for their peace of mind. Following touches check-in, attendees can use their physical or mobile key to enter their room. They will find their sleeping room deep cleaned and sanitized and sealed by the Hilton Clean Stay sticker, verifying that no one has entered their room since it was serviced. Should an attendee have symptoms or take the daily evaluation and not receive a pass, IHP medical staff will be available for consultations or rapid testing. At the meeting space, an IHP or MSP staff member check temperatures and verify the meeting pass. Attendees will go through this process every morning of a multi-day meeting, and if there are concerns or an abnormal temperature reading, attendees will be directed to the IHP consultation room. We manage registration with floor decals and signage, reminding attendees to distance, wear masks, and sanitize hands. Meeting materials outside of name badges are available virtually, and after registration, the attendee will be directed to their meeting room. Meeting rooms are set for local distancing guidelines, such as one per six foot seen here, or alternate sets such as three per 72 inch round or one per cocktail round. The room is sanitized using an electrostatic sprayer each night, and attendees are asked to remain in their seats and wear masks through the meeting. If attendees need to switch rooms, we sanitize between sessions and offer attendees wipes for their peace of mind. Every meeting has unique requirements, and MSP is your resource to aid in developing space layouts and manage flow to ensure a seamless attendee experience. 
We have a variety of safe food and beverage options, including pre-portioned and packaged meals, manned and service buffet stations, plated meals, and grab-and-go options. We look for sustainable solutions such as bamboo or reusable glassware instead of plastic, and make sure safety measures such as shields and social distancing are in place throughout the meal function. We have a variety of solutions and recommendations for every function, keeping in mind safety, flow, and attendee experience. Following the meeting, IHP sends out a post-meeting health and wellness survey. Attendees are sent a link to the survey and are then asked to report symptoms or positive cases. Appropriate contact tracing measures and notification of public health teams are taken if necessary. At Meeting Sites Pro, we are dedicated to getting back to in-person meetings with safety top of mind. We thank our hotel partners who have collaborated with us to do meetings to date. And for this video, we thank our partners at IHP and the Hilton San Diego Bayfront. Okay, so um, this is really a resource and this is on our website, um, on our blog spot, and it's also on our social media that you guys can download and utilize to share with your teams on how this can be done as well. Um, I'm really happy to be sharing the best practices with you guys to actually show you full circle how uh, it can happen. And, um, and with me today, I have Jill Turco from the Hilton Bonnet Creek and Waldorf Astoria, Orlando. We're gonna show a video from her property as well that's showing some of the best practice they're putting in place for meetings. And then when we come back, we'll have Jill on live. Don't forget to use your Q&A to ask questions. Jill to the show. Thanks for that great video. I'm, I'm so excited to see all the progress that all of us have made and all the creativity that's been involved in moving us forward. So we have a proper, I, I've been to your property several times and, um, and I love the, the property. I love it for a number of reasons. One of the unique things is it's really has a lot of space and the two properties are really joined. I remember walking through there and not really being able to tell when I was walking, leaving one property and entering the other. And so it kind of kept continuity from some of my larger programs that needed both properties for space. Let's talk a little bit about your space layout and also talk a little bit about what phase you are in now. Absolutely. Good morning, everybody. And thank you, Michelle, for having me on the show today. Excited to be here. Um, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with Bonnet Creek, we're actually a complex property with two uh, two brands under one roof. So this is a great bird's eye view, kind of showing you the picture. Um, the Hilton is there on the left-hand side. The Waldorf is on the right-hand side with all of our meeting space in between. So really easy to um, have meetings that are more focused staying at the Hilton, or if you have a more intimate meeting at the Waldorf, or just as Michelle said, if you have a very large group, you have the ability to take over the complex. 
And then the other two points of interest shown on here are some of our outdoor event spaces. So our signature island is um, 10,000 square feet of space there. And we just added this new golf pavilion um, right before COVID. So um, it, it's uh, timeliness was, was perfect, um, but this is a great space that can accommodate um, upwards of 800 people at one time with that indoor outdoor capability. So really, just like Michelle said, um, the Waldorf elevates the level of the Hilton and it's not your average Hilton that you would see. So um, the, it's seamless between the two properties. It's not like you walk through one and say, oh my gosh, I just left the, left the Hilton now I'm at the Waldorf or vice versa. So um, it, it's a great complex. And for those of you who have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. So thank you. Yeah, it's fantastic. And talk a little bit about when you plan to go from the current phase to the next phase. Sure. Um, we, um, we actually reopened our doors July 1st of this year and Orlando is in our third phase, which for us, that's the last phase. Phase three is different for, for many different cities, but for phase three in Orlando, that's the last phase. And as of September 25th, we entered that phase. So what does that mean for you and, and meetings? Um, really, that means that when you come to the property, we still have all of our safety measures in place. I was happy that you um, showed the Hilton San Diego, the clean stay, event ready is in place throughout the Hilton, um, throughout all of the Hilton brand. So we have that in place and um, that's to keep our attendees and our employees safe. And we follow the guidelines that are on pl a playbook on the Hilton corporate website. So feel free to access that. Um, but in Orlando itself, we don't necessarily have um, the strict guidelines mandated to have a certain number of people in a certain room or anything like that. However, we work in conjunction with you and your clients as to what you're most comfortable with and how you would like to execute your meeting. So there's, there are some groups that come in and they absolutely wanna have the six feet of social distancing. Mm -hmm. There are some groups that have come in and they're flexible, a little bit more flexible can do four feet of social distancing. So we have that flexibility here in Orlando. Um, the mask mandate is still in place. And again, all the sanitation guidelines are there. And when in public, we do recommend um, the six feet of social distancing with the um, signage throughout the complex. Perfect. Thank you. And then they were saying, um, did, are you have the same owners for both properties? Yes, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Park Hotels is our owner um, and we're managed by Hilton. And then did your team provide any great safety cleaning protocols that were enacted for the complex specifically different than Hilton, uh, you know, their, their clean stay? Um, I don't know if we put anything that's different. Um, Hilton, I mean, in my opinion, I am, I am biased, but I've heard great feedback from our clientele as well that Hilton is one of the premier hotel companies out there that have really taken this head on. And we haven't just addressed, you know, certain individual questions here and there. We have 120 plus playbook um, that details everything that we're doing from um, a clean environment. And um, that goes, you know, that we, we, wait three days after a person checks out before we clean the room. We, instead of um, refilling water glasses, we remove the water glasses and replace them. Yeah. Um, we have the clean stay seal and the uh, event ready seals on all of the guest rooms and the meeting spaces. So I wouldn't say we did anything over and above because it's such an extensive, great program that we have in place. So we follow those guidelines. Perfect, thank you for that. And in this picture, Talk a little bit about um, how your pool and spa and golf are done, you know, to be safe in this uh, pandemic and time frame. Yeah, we, we work again with our clientele that come in and we're, we have safety measures in place in regards to sanitation throughout. Um, golf, for instance, we'll use one, golf, one person per golf cart instead of two. Um, so then that way, if you have a foursome, each person has their own golf cart. Um, they're um, sanitized in between usage, of course. And then the spa, um, it's a very intimate space. So usually it's a one-on-one -on -one environment anyway, but all of our team members will have the PPE. So the masks and, and the gloves when necessary. Um, and we ensure that there's the distancing put in between as well. Perfect, great, thank you for that. And then any, any other comments on this slide before we move over to uh, the next? 
Um, I don't think so. It's just that, um, you know, we're fully open at both properties. So we have both of our pools open. We have our golf course open, the spa. Um, you know, we have uh, individual travelers coming in and we've actually serviced over 30 different events during the pandemic. So uh, we're very skilled in, in having safe and successful meetings. And we hope that um, you'll, you'll think of coming to Orlando and Bonnet Creek for your next one. Now, I'm super excited. You guys did an MBA bubble um, recently, and I, I just love all the creativity. Like I said, anytime I can share that with everybody, I just want everybody to know how this is being done. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we were part of the MBA bubble. For those that are avid MBA watchers, you know that the season came down here to Orlando. So we were part of that bubble at the Waldorf Astoria side, and they did a full buyout of the property. And um, it was obviously very successful. There were no cases that came from it um, or you, you would have um, understandably heard about it, but um, it, it's how we trained our staff. And again, following the protocols of event ready and clean stay, but they had security throughout the property. There was no outside um, public allowed in the property. So we, for this particular um, customer, we closed down everything, including our spa and our restaurant um, to have an exclusive buyout just for them. And it worked magnificently. They had a lot of um, events on site and some of them were outside. Um, we have videos to showcase uh, some of those things happening as well. But um, yeah, they just have different sets on site and, and we, we were very happy that um, they chose us to be a part of it. And it went again over very successfully. Perfect. And then can you tell us what your average occupancy has been for each of the properties? Oh gosh. Um, it's hard to say because we, we have had groups. So when group comes in that, that spikes it, but um, probably on average, I would say about 15% on the weekends, it's usually higher during the week. It's been a little lower, obviously for, people that are able to get away for a vacation. But um, just recently we were over 50% because we had a group in house at the Hilton. So um, it does fluctuate, but on average, we're probably you know right around that 15% range. Perfect. And then talk a little bit um, about your food and beverage, your prepackaged buffet. I know we show a lot about, about this mm -hmm. already. We've, I feel like we've labored over this for, for months and our video showed it clearly, but just talk about just any best practices you can say that you guys are doing that's that's just over the top, that's not standard. Yeah, I think it's really important that we focus on still having the quality of service and food and beverage, not compromising that despite having um, individual packaging needed or um, different things put in place to ensure safety. So like for instance, the contact free dispensers, this was something that we retrofitted our um, coffee makers uh, to be able to individually dispense your own coffee without having a server stand there and do it for you. So there are some things that we've implemented to make it easy in that regard. Um, another thing is at our buffet, people are nervous about buffets, but um, the new buffet. There's, yeah, there's there's great options that we have out there. So um, we put the plexi the plexiglass up, obviously, but what we put at the start of all of our buffets are the aero glove machines yeah so this is a machine that has um, a sensor on it when you put your hand over it it blows air into a glove and you stick your hand easily into the glove that you can use the ladles or any of the other serving utensils without fear of cross-contamination with um, other people touching it so those are some of the things we've put into place, um, you know, individual containers or whatnot. That was that was somewhat in uh, in play anyway. So we've just made sure that they're biodegradable or sustainable whenever we're using any of those kind of um, products. Can you um, tell me, are you with all the extra things that you guys are doing um, here that you're talking about? Are you incurring extra fees um, for meetings during this time frame? And then, as such, if you are. I feel like this question comes up, I swear to you, since May, it's come up on every single meeting I've, I've done. Mm -hmm. um, it, everybody's nervous uh, and thinking that the costs have gone up, but in my opinion, they haven't gone up. It's just been kind of a transfer of fees where you used to have people at the back of the house cleaning. Now you have them up front. It's like used to be taboo to see somebody with the squirt bottle going around and cleaning. And now you want to see them doing that. And you don't have as many chefs that are 
um, cooking in the kitchen and cleaning up together because you're you're being safer about how that's being done. But they're wondering, are you going to increase and start charging higher room rentals or how you're going to cover some of the costs for this? So can you just speak to that a little bit for your properties? Sure. I mean, for our specific property, um, we've, we obviously have, uh, you know, we have put some extra servers out um, and some extra people to help and be there when, um, you know, pe people might be nervous or whatnot. But um, for any additional staff that we've added, we have not passed that cost on to the client. We have incurred any additional costs at our expense. We want you to have meetings. We want you to come and feel comfortable and we're not gonna increase costs because that will just um, deter things even further. So our goal is for meetings to come back and for us to do it you know, at a reasonable price and safely. And then are the meetings that you're having, are you finding them to be mostly regional or local um, versus uh, across the country? Or what are, you, what are you experiencing at your properties? Um, a, a lot of our meetings have been more regional. Um, Florida Association is one that's been um, um, organizations that have been able to have their programs. Um, but we've had some ones from some uh, events from throughout the country. We just hosted a group last week that um, actually had to relocate out of California. Yes. And because California obviously can't hold, um, I think it's more than 25 it's or 50 none, people, none right. at all. Okay. Yeah. Apologies. I, um, yeah, it's, a, it's unfortunate. Right now, but but unfortunately, yeah. So because they couldn't hold their event in California, they, they brought it here. So we had, you know, a, a great amount of people from across the, the nation come in um, a week ago. And again, it was, we were able to service it successfully and, and safely for them. And um, we're, so it's, it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, the meetings do seem smaller. Um, and obviously, even if meetings were booked and they still choose to have their meeting moving forward, it's going to be um, smaller, but they probably need the same amount of space because they're doing a hybrid event and they want the social distancing. So those are some of the things that we've um, experienced with the groups. And then Jill, I really thank you for being on I, and I'm going to ask you to go off camera but I'm going to ask you to stay on because we're going to bring you back as part of the panel but before you go what was the name of the machine you discussed for the gloves that you guys are using it's called an aero glove machine a-e-r-o glove machine and you can get it in a left and a right um, and put them there at the end of the buffet and Rachel and Russell, your questions are excellent. I'm going to save that for the panel because I want to ask those of everybody. So please stay on so you can hear that happen. And thank you, Jill, again. I'll see you in just a few minutes. I'm going to introduce Travis now, um, Binkley. He's from Visit Orlando, and I'm going to kick us off with one of his videos. Our entire community is excited and committed to hosting your event. From our hotel partners to the airport, world-class theme parks and countless entertainment amenities, our community is thrilled to welcome back convention and trade show attendees to the Orange County Convention Center. Guided by the best available data, science, and research, our three-pronged recovery strategy revolves around the implementation of a robust set of recovery and resiliency guidelines developed in consultation with Orange County's Health Services Department. As a GBAC star accredited venue, we introduced a comprehensive sanitation schedule following expertise from the International Sanitary Supply Association, the leading worldwide cleaning industry association. We know convention planners and attendees want to know our destination is going above and beyond to create a safe environment for their event. Visit Orlando has played a leading role co-chairing our destination's economic recovery task force, bringing together government, businesses, and medical leaders to ensure a safe reopening and a strong ongoing compliance throughout the region. We also pioneered a groundbreaking new program with Orlando Health to provide each group their own customized medical concierge program. As domestic international travelers cautiously return to the skies, Orlando International Airport is committed to providing a welcoming and more importantly, a safe and secure environment for all. With new protective measures in place, I'm confident that we can fly safely today for a stronger tomorrow. These unprecedented times have put our strengths to the test. Through the challenges of COVID-19, 
we have remained resilient and united in the success of the International Drive Resort area. We are working hand in hand with our community and local government partners to make sure that iDrive is ready and prepared for your return. In fact, our business and the many transportation connectors have implemented extensive sanitation and safety measures to ensure the well-being of our travelers. The International Drive Resort area is ready to safely host you and your attendees as the safest and most business-ready destination in the world for convention and trade shows. We are proud to have more than 150 convention hotels representing some of the most recognizable brands in the industry, leading the way on sanitation. As the world's most trusted destination, our convention hotels are keeping the health and safety of you and your guests top of mind with robust cleanliness procedures that go beyond current CDC guidelines. Orlando was chosen to serve as the summer home to both the NBA and Major League Soccer seasons. We have shown the industry that we can safely get So, have Travis. A live event through the proven success of the AAU Junior National Volleyball Championships and the Together Again Expo, hosting thousands in Orlando for these events. While things may look a little different these days, one thing has stayed the same. Orlando is ready to welcome back groups with unforgettable experiences that cannot be found anywhere else. We know that exhibitions mean business. We look forward to seeing you soon at the Center of Hospitality in Orlando. So I really love this. I love the video. I love everything you're doing, Travis. Thank you for being on the show and for sharing it. Um, I know you've been on several of our digital destinations, but this is one of your first on live meeting updates. So I'm just really happy to have you on. Absolutely, absolutely. Good morning and thank you for having me on the broadcast today. And uh, definitely wanna say happy new year to everyone. So excited to be on the broadcast today. Thank you. And I wanna just start off with one of the things that hit me you know, every time I talk to you, I get something new that you guys are doing over there in Orlando, but your Orlando Health Program, which is a customized medical concierge program, mm -hmm. is cutting edge. I, I have done this all across the world, and I haven't heard of anybody else doing something like that. So can you tell everybody what that entails? Yeah, it's actually a, a partnership that we've helped pioneer with our medical partners here in, in our Orlando community that really works together with the one common goal, which is to support our convention and attendee travelers that come into the destination. So one of the key takeaways when you about the partnership is working with our citywide and our event planners to have them come up with a, a business summary uh, with action plans involved in that summary. So we can make sure that we pull our, our medical partners uh, into our pre-planning pre meetings and our, our programs that we're um, having leading up to their events in Orlando to make sure that we have the support, uh, the volunteers, and of course the medical staff on site at our convention center um, as their attendees come on site here in Orlando. And that's been fantastic. I, I believe that's been a big part of your guys' success, one piece of it um, in getting everybody back to it, because you guys have had some large programs, and I know some of them were showcased in that video. One of them that wasn't that we're going to show real quick that I'm, I'm really excited to showcase is the Central Florida International Auto Show video. Mm -hmm. So let's look at that and then we'll have you share um, some ideas about safety and how the program happens successfully. Sure. It's the first auto show to be hosted safely in the US since the start of the pandemic. And it's here in Orlando at the Orange County Convention Center. So Travis, I don't know if that you see that that stopped. Um, she may have had an internet problem. So you guys had the very first, I, I, I feel like uh, gigantic meetings. You guys have numerous <laughs> of them with thousands of people that have been coming in person since. And, um, and you've really been doing a, a great job at, at having these programs. I know we don't have the video um, right now, but can you talk a little, actually it's back. Go ahead. So this is great. It's okay without sound because we can just talk a little bit about, uh, Travis, just talk over it sure. while it's playing about some of the best practices that were put in place here that helped it be successful. 
You know what, again, working together with our Orlando Health partner uh, partners here in the community, really just identifying the, the, the proof points for our planners as they come in. I think what's critical with uh, every event that takes place in Orlando is the business summary, is, is making sure that we understand uh, who the audience is, you know, the key move in, move out dates, uh, who their key players are, and understanding what their goals, objectives that they're trying to accomplish for their events when they come into Orlando. And really, you know, it all starts from our airport and making sure that's a, um, that's a clean, health, and safe uh, travel experience once they land in Orlando. And then as they come over to the convention center, keep in mind, um, these are events that are happening uh, at our convention center, but also are, are being housed by 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 different hotel brands in our convention center district, um, which is also, it's really, you ever heard the phrase, it takes a community or it takes yeah. a village, I should say. Um, really, it just takes a whole partnership of, of everyone in the community to make sure that we deliver these successful positive experiences in person because um, these are going to be our proof points that we provide out to our planners going forward uh, in our recovery process uh, for the industry. Absolutely. I love that. And I, I, I say it takes an industry because I do think all of us, I, I no longer identify as competitors or hotels or it's, it's all of us in here together and together we're stronger. And I do believe through this uh, pandemic, that's the biggest thing that I have uh, had solidified in my mind. So I love all that you guys have done. I love that the car show, you guys have had a lot of success um, and you've, you've actually been doing some contact tracing as well, depending on the client that you have in. So you do have some data to show that what you guys have been doing has been uh, in fact, not uh, an issue from a COVID standpoint, correct? Correct, correct. Yeah, so we work with several agencies locally to um, work through that data based on the information that we're provided from each group that does come into to town in terms of their audience, number of attendees, hotel properties that their attendees are staying in, dates at the convention center. So there's a process in place uh, along with our partners that we use to really just help drive uh, the positive impact that one, they make from an economic standpoint in Orlando, but also the, like you say, the contact tracing thereafter, because that's a part of the story. It's a part of all of our story right now, to be perfectly honest with you. So, you know, we understand that the microscope is on Orlando because we're open. You know, we've been open, as Jill alluded to earlier, uh, since the fall of, of 2020. Um, currently, we have over 91% of our hotels that are open on a limited basis. So we understand that this is a critical moment for us uh, as we sit in the driver's seat to host some of these large, you know, 5, 10, 15,000 in-person uh, attendee events in Orlando. Yeah, and it, there's a question for you. Just um, can you tell me just as far as the cars go? I watched this video a couple of times and I don't remember. As far as people touching the cars and getting in the car to see how it feels, how did they handle that? Um, there are some, uh, there, there is a volunteer staff on site that is uh, going through the, the health uh, health measures, of course, with sanitation um, as they get in, gloves, if they'd like to put those on as well. But there are um, volunteers around each of the actual uh, automobiles inside the expo hall floor that are kind of helping those guests in and out of the vehicles, those who wish to, to do so. Um, but there is a extensive process in place to make sure that as they get in and get out of those vehicles, um, or if they just want to walk around the rope and stanchion inside the expo hall, again, that you have the support there from a cleanliness standpoint to make sure that there's any interaction um, um, you have those measures in place with hand sanitizer, yep. sprays, things of that nature. And I'm going to ask um, my team, Isabella, please drop in the chat that link to the video so that everybody has an opportunity to actually hear the video because it did address that in the video itself. It also um, showed it actually happening. So I think it would be helpful if you guys had heard the whole thing. So we're going to have that link dropped in so you guys can actually visit that um, directly. Thank you, Travis, for um, being on. I'm going to ask you to stay on the show. But sure, um, sure. I'm going to have you back in a little bit for the panel discussion. And I'm going to welcome now Greg Herning from Renaissance Newport. Thank you, Travis. Absolutely. Welcome, Greg. I know your property we're having on. Um, you've been on the show several times, so welcome back. And your property we're having on from the standpoint that it's going to be new product opening up. <laughs> February 1st. I'm super excited about it. And just tell us a little bit about the about the property. Tell me about, um, you know, the safety protocols and, and how it's going to be different. Thank you, Michelle. It is nice to be back with you. And, and I must tell you, I've enjoyed listening to my two colleagues, uh, both from uh, Orlando, where I spent about six years of my career. And it was nice seeing some of those, uh, some of my uh, 
little haunts that I used to go to and visit there. <laughs> and if and if you you know, I'm really envious that that uh, Orlando is back in the meetings business, and I'm very happy for them. It's such a great town. However, when when one wants to head to the West Coast, then we have now uh, just a incredible opportunity, a, a property that has kind of reimagined itself and repositioned itself. Um, this uh, Renaissance Newport Beach Hotel, of which I was so honored to uh, join the team as the uh, general manager, will open, as you said, February 1. Uh, an extensive uh, floor to ceiling renovation has been done. And, you know, we've been around in this business. Renovations are tough. Renovations are just uh, full of challenges. When it's done, however, though, it is so fun to, to see a new product. And uh, we fired up our lobby, Michelle. We fired up our lobby for the first time um, a couple days ago as, as our very talented sales team started the, uh, doing sites already, which I'm so happy for. So as we fired up our um, lobby, I stood there and in the dark, rich blues with the accented soft pastel yellows, as you can see some of these pictures, the wood grain with the wicker, it feels um, so beachy to me. I, I yeah, really love absolutely, that. and and it has everything to do with this. What I think this hotel was branded perfectly for this next iteration with the Renaissance brand. Um, I'm learning as with everyone else the the magic of the Renaissance brand, and it's exactly what they do. The Renaissance brand will take the um, the local culture into every one of their hotels, uh, whether you're here in the States or abroad uh, in um, uh, other countries across, you're, you're going to go into a Renaissance lobby and you're going to feel the locality. You're going to feel what's uh, with there in, in the same with cuisine. So what we've done here is yes, you will see, you will get, you will get a very cool California vibe with, uh, with that beach scene that we're so famous for, you know, that beach scene um, blended in perfectly. And uh, so that's what I'm very excited for you and all the viewers and the listeners today. So let's look real quick at the co the, the sleeping rooms because that's, yep. I love the lobby and everything you've guys done with your art studio and how you make it feel, but these sleeping rooms are so coastal. I just want to go stay in Totally, <laughs> totally. And, and you know, I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm kind of cheating because, you know, as is the custom, when you're relocating to an area, I'm actually staying in one of these beautiful one bedroom suites right now. And I got to tell you, I get a smile on my face at the end of a long day and walking into what you can see very light colors. You can see the, the uh, light wooden floors. Yep. Um, we've got views here at the hotel, either a beautiful view, view of our, of our um, roofside pool or a mountain view of the area of Orange County. And so I just had balconies on, on the suites that are on the corner of the building. So, I mean, you know, but you can get a, your, your listener and your viewer can get a view there of a very soft pastels, very pretty, very coastal, very breezy. Beautiful. I love that. And then, you know, you have a restaurant there that's also um, serving like coastal cuisine. Um, tell me a little bit about that. I love the name because we can have a lot of fun with it. Current yeah. <laughs> cuisine. And, um, and we can really have a lot of fun with that name. So the, the nice part right now is we are still, as we speak, even today, we, uh, we have called our executive chef, Adam, back uh, into the building, and, and we are having sessions yesterday and today on just how special, what we're going to introduce that is true to the brand and is true to what our, our guests, both our leisure and our group guests, are looking for. Something local, something that gives them a feeling that, um, that, they're, that they're eating um, the taste of California is there. And, and it can be so creative nowadays. And I think our chef Adam is having fun with this. So we don't have it all worked out yet, Michelle. We're, the fun part is we're in the process of doing that right now. So I, I can't wait to see exactly what we unleash um, to our guests. Can't wait to get there and be able to, we'll have to do a show live from your uh, location. Oh, I'm so excited for that. You know, like, like many properties that are in the, our COVID situation right now will will open with grab and go yep. um, uh, to to meet the guidelines of the area. But you know our goal is, and it's always been my goal wherever I've been. If if it's grab and go, then it has to be really good grab and go. It has to be really creative grab and go. It's got to be something that's still 
is an experience and that's what we're working on today. So can you tell us the sleeping rooms? They're asking, what's the standard size of your guest rooms? You know, about um, 600 square feet. Um, the and then so they, they vary depending on the size of the building, I know, but they're, they're many of our, it's got standard guest rooms with your king and your double queens, but you also have, um, uh, you know, the larger one bedroom suites. What I love about the mix, out of the 444 guest rooms, Michelle, there's 56 suites. It's, that's suite heavy. That's very nice. Yeah. And so we'll use that to our advantage. Um, uh, the one bedroom suite that I'm in is just lovely. And I've been in the business my whole career and, um, you know, my whole life. And um, yeah. so I've been in many, many suites and these are right up there among the best I've ever seen. Very unique, very, very open air, very, very fun. Well, I appreciate you being on. I'm going to invite everybody now back on the show with Greg. So Jill and Travis come back on. And um, I'd like to just ask everybody, remember to please, um, and the picture that he showed, David, is a standard room. Um, I want to ask everybody to show, um, that's on the show, our audience, to please ask questions in the Q&A. This is the last part of it. So make sure, the goal is to make sure you get all of your burning questions answered. And I want to make sure that the only way we're able to do that and accomplish our goals to serve you here is to make sure you guys are asking questions. So please um, blow up the Q&A uh, for those questions. So I'm going to start off by asking, somebody had asked to talk about some of the leads. Are you guys starting to see leads coming in? And if so, where, how much uh, business are you guys seeing coming in for in-person meetings? And how, how I mean, are, is it for 2021? Um, is it for like now? Uh, is it for mid 2021? Is it for 22? Just in each of your respective areas, what are you seeing as far as leads go? Sure. Uh, uh, if if I may jump in, from a destination standpoint, we are certainly experiencing an uptick in terms of lead volume for many of the reasons that were discussed on the program today were, quite frankly, a lot of uh, our competitor cities around the country are going through their own level of restriction or, or what have you. So um, I think through the proof points that we provided through that we are able to host in-person events of all sizes, I think a lot of companies, organizations are looking toward um, our destination to hold their next event. So yes, to answer your question, Michelle, we are certainly see seeing some of our hotel uh, sorry excuse me some of our groups that are looking to, to plan later in the year for 2021 but certainly a lot of activity for 2022 and beyond so uh, we are noticing that uh, some of the events that are coming our way are a little bit smaller based on the in-person elements versus the the virtual component which we know is going to be a part of just about all the events that we do going forward for the next 24 to 36 months uh, but we are certainly from a destination standpoint seeing an uptick in lead volume for our for our Orlando destination. Anybody yeah. else? Go if ahead, I can Jill. just follow Travis just for the Orlando um, part of it. Um, I have definitely at the turn of the year, I've seen a, a great uptick in leads as well. So I feel a lot of people were kind of waiting to see what was happening with the vaccine. A lot of people were waiting for um, the elections. And now that things are more or less solidified in terms of what the um, progress is moving forward, um, I think there's a lot more confidence in terms of when they can start having meetings comfortably. Um, I've been getting a few leads for, you know, March, April, May, um, but majority of them are for the back half of the year and our demand is super, super high for second half of 21. Um, 22 and 23, um, it's, it's here and there. I feel a lot of people needed to cancel or, or move their events from 2021 and move them into future years. So I think that that's affected um, when they'll return to our destination. But overall, we have seen um, a, a definitely an uptick in leads, especially in the last two to three weeks. So it's, it's very promising. And Greg, you're doing some site uh, inspections, I heard that you say on there. So you're obviously seeing some on the West Coast too. Yeah, and you know, it's predominantly social right now. That's okay. Um, we, we're set up wonderfully for that kind of meeting, but also uh, this property is plopped down into just an incredible um, business neighborhood. We've got the Oracles and the, the Googles right down the street. And I think our, you know, we're all, we're all wanting to see when, when meetings do come back, are they gonna come back a bit smaller? Uh, chances are so that's the case. We're set up beautifully for that size. 
uh, and we're in the right neighborhood, we're in the right thing. So we're, we're encouraged, we're encouraged. We also have like many hotels, some groups that backlog that had booked prior to COVID and now they're, they're sitting on those dates and we're very encouraged uh, that they, they wanna keep the, they want to keep that in place and they wanna find the dates that they feel comfortable. So it's all about moving forward right now with the vaccinations, isn't it? Beautiful. And then can you tell me, are you, are any of you doing any contact tracing for any of your events? Uh, we're we're not open yet as of yet, so I'll. I'll yeah. Um, yeah, we we ask for feedback from our planners if there is any um, any cases that have been of note or anything um, so forth. We don't have something that I know of that's um, you know a, a definitive thing that we use to trace, but we ask all of our planners to keep us informed so that we can um, know what's going on and also inform our own employees. And I'd say like for me, I, um, for our meetings, we're using in-house physicians. So really they do pre-event surveys. So before anybody's able to travel for the program, they answer those health uh, surveys mm -hmm. and they get a thumbs up that allows them to actually travel to the program. And if they get a thumbs down, they cannot come to the program. And then on site, there's tested every day, the same thing, the questions. And if um, there's an issue, they're sent over to a uh, medical uh, individual. So whether that be a uh, uh, some HCP, whether it's a doctor or a nurse practitioner that's there, um, and they go ahead and test them further, whether it's testing or whatever needs to be done. And then post event, we send at seven days and 10 days, a survey asking for um, information about their, how they're feeling and how they're doing and if they have tested positive or any symptoms. So if that were the case that something did come back, um, we're able to inform people properly. And there are resources available um, for larger programs. A lot of the stuff we're doing, we have been doing has been smaller in nature. So we've been able to monitor to know that, you know, all 10 people are in the same space. So it's not like you have to have people with bracelets on, but there's a company called Valor um, Technologies that I just posted on, on my social media where they have bracelets they put on. And so what this does is it's a tracking system. So if you have breakout rooms or different people going in different locations, you can track where they are. So if one of those questions comes back that somebody did test positive for it, you could identify the right folks that they may need to uh, you know, be checked or tested that they may have come in contact with somebody who had symptoms. So that's kind of um, the way I, I do feel like a lot of the hotels are leaving that up to um, us planners to be very proactive in making sure we're doing our due diligence to, to manage that and to inform them if there were issues after the fact. And, and the, the hotel partners I've been working with also have a system in place that if one of their staff that was working on an event ended up having some symptoms or positive, they would also inform any of the groups that were um, in contact with them. So in full transparency, we've all been working in partnership to make this happen. Anybody have anything to add to that? Okay, um, I'm gonna say, Jill, can you share any action items you may ask of the client or a meeting planner to help with safety, um, like hotel refresh times a little longer for sanitation? Um, I just brought up one of the things would probably be some contact tracing or you know, after the fact to inform you if there were any issues. Is there anything else? Um, I think just keep in mind what else is going on in the property. Um, I know one of our uh, takeaways from having groups in the hotel is we had two groups going on at the same time. And one of the groups had a reception in the foyer space. And another group was coming from their space to go into the lobby and had to pass by that group um, on their way. So um, obviously when you're drinking and eating, you don't have a mask. So people may have or could have felt uncomfortable. So something to just think about when you have more than one group in house at a time, um, just ensure that maybe your reception is in a room or in a specific area where you're not gonna be sharing that space with anyone else. Um, so I think that was um, a good takeaway. And then um, I think also, you know, our signage is really good at policing people. We, we've found out that we don't need to police people as much as we thought we might have to going into this. I think everybody's aware of the situation and I think people are respectful of 
um, the people around them and, and the environment. Um, there was one group that we had in that, you know, they were at tables of four um, and, and spread out as they were um, instructed to do so. But then, you know, everyone gets excited and they start collaborating and, you know, they start bringing their chairs over to the table and everybody starts talking and get excited. And there's now 10 people at a table. And, you know, it was, it was something where we walked by and we were like, oh, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't look good. <laughs> it's not something that, you know, but what we did is we approached the planner, you know, um, and shortly after that session, they made an announcement and just, you know, reiterated to, to stay, you know, within your tables and to make sure to be cognizant of social distancing. So, you know, people love to get together and that energy is there. Um, but that was the only time out of all of our groups that we really had to kind of say something in terms of policing. So um, that was another kind of learning moment that we had. Thank you. And then um, also, do you guys, any of you see any scenario where in the future proof of vaccination is going to be required to attend a meeting or a convention? I, I got to tell you, I think that's on the drawing board and that probably will be the case that we'll probably see things like that for the, uh, for the upcoming, the calendar year that we're in. I think it will, it will fade in time, but um, it's, it's different. It's going to be curious for all of us to see what uh, of these COVID uh, new norms do carry over on a long period of time. I think there will be some really good best practices that we will learn that will continue. And I'm all for that. Yeah, I would say for us locally, uh, you know, we are not aware of any of, of uh, that nature, the, that topic. But, you know, as Greg mentioned, I think we're going to certainly see some best practices that will carry out throughout the course of this year, especially going forward, um, just from an awareness standpoint, as they say, knowledge is power. So I think, you know, taking some of those best practices and putting them in front of our meeting planners, as well as the attendees, certainly will go a long way in, in our road to recovery. Okay, and then I also want to, um, I, I, we kind of skipped it. So this is, I've been going with the questions, but one of the things I wanted to ask you guys to share with everybody is, you know, we've been trying to come up and brainstorm with unique ideas for doing setups for our space or unique ideas for meetings and events in general. And you guys, we've shared some of your indoor space. I want to talk about some of the outdoor space that's available in each of your areas. And I just want you to give me two of them, each of you, outdoor spaces that's maybe in your area that's unique um, that, you know, maybe somebody hasn't thought about that they could po potentially think about using for a group. Um, I can start with that. And uh, Southern California has some of the best weather in the world. And, and so these hotels uh, take advantage of that. And I was so taken when I made my first visit here that really of our 30,000 square foot of space, our, our largest space is really our bamboo garden. And the bamboo garden is, is going to be, especially when we open, uh, for the near future, the Bamboo Garden will be a focal point of our hotel. We will want our guests to go out there and enjoy, whether it's a meeting, a get together, or an after, or a place to take their meal. Um, so we're going to make it pristine. It's going to be fun. It's going to be clean and sanitized. There's going to be plenty of signage, and and then we also have a, a for the smaller groups, more intimate. We have a beautiful garden gazebo, which is kind of like a beautiful place to have a wedding, a wedding um, um, ceremony. Uh, and I can see making that little area into uh, a small meetings area as well. So we're going to get very creative. Fantastic. Thank you for, for sharing that. How much total square footage do you have at your space, Greg? 30,000. 30,000. Okay, perfect. Because somebody had asked that. Okay, Jill, will you take it from, from your, your perspective? Sure. Um, I kind of touched on it when we went through our presentation. So we have our 10,000 square foot signature island. Um, so that's a great area that has a semi-private walkover space that walks over our water. Um, and it's an island that overlooks our 18-hole Reese Jones golf course. And you can see the Disney fireworks from there as well. So it's really great, um, beautiful space. And again, just surrounded by all that greenery, you know, it's very unique to Orlando. So that's a great spot um, right next to our promenade space off the, the Waldorf side. And then um, I also mentioned um, in, the, in the presentation that we have a new golf pavilion that we just built. So that's about 18,000 square feet of tented space. Um, again, right off of the first tee of the golf course. So there's an additional 5,000 square foot terrace 
um, that's all outdoor that um, just has a beautiful view of, of the first hole. Um, and you have that indoor outdoor so we can kind of leave the doors open if, if you want to have that kind of free flowing space and you can utilize that however you like. Um, and then just, you know, we have our two pools, which obviously are, are great areas as well to hold some outdoor events. Perfect. And last but not least, Travis. You know what I would say from a destination standpoint, the silver lining for us in Orlando is it's really what's happening over the last you know 12 months or so has really challenged us to be more creative, uh, both on site with our hotel partners, as Jill mentioned, having those outdoor spaces. But not only that is, is our theme park partners, our offsite venue partners is really creating those outdoor open air experiences. So, I mean, I could go through the long list of outdoor unique spaces, a couple that I'll touch on, certainly yeah. um, Disney Springs, they're outdoor, it's all outdoor. Or, um, e event space there that you can do there at the complex, uh, City Walk Entertainment Complex, you got Icon Park with where the wheel is, you certainly can do something there in terms of an outdoor event uh, for upwards of 2,500 people. Um, one of our downtown venues that's kind of newer on the scene is Dr. Phillips Performing Arts Center, their front yard festival, which they created some open air pods, which uh, I want to say it's north of 200 pods. That's what I was talking about, because you can have concerts there, and it's just, it does, uh, you guys have been following me on our social media. I've posted pictures of the yes. concerts with the pods. I'm so excited about getting back to live music. You know what, for us, I'm going to just tell you right now, they're, right now they're hosting animation. So this weekend coming up, they're doing the Lion King. So we're going to take our girls there. We've already reserved oh, a, a pod there on the function lawn and go watch the Lion King. And everything's digitalized in terms of the food and beverage experience that they'll bring to your actual pod there on the function lawn. So just think about that, doing an event that's open air on a function lawn with the backdrop of, uh, you know, almost a billion dollar building in the backdrop of your event that's on site uh, there at the facility. So just you know, challenging our partners to get more creative in terms of what they can do with their outdoor spaces is really uh, one of many silver linings for us here in the destination. You guys have been really um, phenomenal about all the stuff that you've done with that. I want to ask you, how much does an average pod cost? Because some people are thinking those pod ideas are going to be astronomical and not affordable for people because it's now you have you where you could fit like, you know, 100,000 people, you can fit a thousand people. Mm -hmm. um, because these pods take up a lot of space. So how much is it about for a pod? Yeah, you're looking anywhere from, you know, what they do is they build the food and beverage components into the pod. So the, the average price starts at around $100. And then, of course, with your food and beverage, and you could fit six individuals in each pod. Um, so if you think about the food and beverage for six people, that number obviously is going to um, increase. But, you know, if it's just you and, of course, your significant other and it's, you're not having any food and beverage in your pod, you're looking at anywhere uh, in the ballpark of about $100 per pod, which is very affordable. And it's you just a, new, a different experience. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally, I was expecting it to be $1,000 or something because you get you don't and you don't get the, you get a different experience, a better to me elevated experience. You don't have people spilling beer on you or, mm -hmm. you know, you, where you can't walk or move or actually see the concert. You actually get to experience it. So I'm I'm super thrilled about that. And I can't wait to make it over there. And you're going to be on our digital destinations show again. You're coming up. Is it, do you know, I, I'm not sure when, but anyway, um, he goes through all of these digital, uh, all these different destinations on digital destinations, and he actually showcases them and shows the, the actual venue. So if you get a chance to uh, watch us on there for, for Travis would be great. I, we've dropped everybody's contact information into the, um, the uh, chat, and um, I'm going to ask Isabella to put it one more time in there because I want it to be top of mind for everybody to connect. And I want to ask our panelists to leave you guys with one bit of advice as you, we continue forward in 2021. Um, but before you do that, I just want to say um, in closing, um, you know, happy 2021, everybody. In the beginning of the presentation, I talked about our history, our goals to inspire, elevate, educate, and focus on forward movement on what is possible rather than what is not. And if you've gained something from this show today, I'm really hoping that you'll evaluate um, us afterwards. But I also wanna ask you to do one more action item of liking our show on social media. And really a big, big, big ask would be to ask you to please share it out with your network. If you can share this so that we can share this information with a broader audience to as many as we can that are in hospitality, that are trying to figure out how to go forward, trying to figure out how to be inspired. Those that are, um, 
you know, really looking for, for a way forward, we would love it and really appreciate your help. And that would be the biggest compliment you could give um, for us today. So I'm going to ask the audience now, or the panelists just right now, I'm going to kick it off with Greg, then go to Jill, then go to Travis. Please give us the audience your, um, you know, advice for 2021. Thank you, Michelle. And I um, sure enjoyed uh, sharing some information with you folks and come and see us. But here's the deal. You're, you're going to get back to it and there's going to be an apprehensiveness. We get it. We get it. Um, I, would, I would advise and, and request that you get back at it with something else. You bring a big load of confidence. Bring some confidence with you when you do get back from the meetings world and start coming back to see us because during this downtime, uh, we hoteliers, um, and I, I think we all deserve an honorary advanced degree in microbiology. We have, we have all learned plenty and we are ready to provide a, a safe and sanitary uh, um, confines for you. And uh, we wanna get back to business. I know you do. Come and bring some confidence. We're gonna, we're gonna have, we're gonna rock and roll. Beautiful, thank you, Greg. And your hotel's in Newport Beach. Correct. Right? This is somebody would just ask that. And again, Greg's information as well as Jill's and Travis's are located in the um, chat. So please look for it there, Jill. Yes, thank you. Thanks again for your time today on the call, everybody. We appreciate it. Um, I think my advice for 2021 is stay engaged and stay in contact with your salespeople, with your Hilton uh, national salespeople or whoever your national rep might be. We This is a fluid situation. Things are constantly changing. Um, there are always new and different things coming up in terms of finding solutions for challenges. Um, and other opportunities. So um, I, I know a recent one that just came out for Hilton, I think it came out earlier this week, is Hilton Hybrid Events. So these, this is some information that's out there for you to access to help you navigate in hybrid events. So continue talking with us. We'll, we, we're here to help you as well as partner with you um, and get through it all. Um, I know we're all in a tough situation and looking forward to some great events happening in the near future. And um, happy new year to everybody. Happy 2021. <laughs> Travis. Absolutely. And I, a couple closing remarks here. One, I'd like to say thank you, Michelle, for again, having me on the broadcast. So, so a couple things, right, um, that I'd love our meeting and event planners to carry forward with us uh, going forward is, is one, uh, patience, uh, understanding and, and flexibility, right? Uh, as we move forward through uncharted waters um, till we get to the other side of this, we all have to be flexible, understanding and patient with patient with each other, right? Uh, when you do that, you know, that's when the value chain gets stronger because we're all a part of the value chain that we so often talk about internally with our team at Visit Orlando. So, and another thing I'd like to leave the audience with is instead of waiting till we get to the other side of this, let's stop right now and smell the roses. Let's celebrate the small all successes that we often do every time an event happens in Orlando, we celebrate that as a small success for us as a positive affirmation to where we're going forward in the future. You know, we're, we're coming back stronger than ever. So let's stop along the way, everyone, and smell the roses and celebrate these small successes through while, while we trans, transition through this, this uncharted territory. So with that, you know, have a safe and wonderful Happy New Year. Thank you. Thanks, Travis. And I want to say, for my advice, I would say do it right do it safe and collaborate. And it's a big deal to make sure we're doing it right and we're doing it safe and we don't take any chances right now. So safety first is, is my biggest advice uh, going through 2021, but also to collaborate. Um, there's been a lot of questions about hotels maybe charging a, you know fees, exorbitant fees for meeting room rental or uh, other fees for cleaning, but that's really not happening. If you just collaborate and you talk to your hotel partners, or any of the partners out there you're looking at working with, they are open to conversations. We, we are really a community and an industry that's very strong and we are stronger together. I've been saying that over and over again. So cheers you guys to your 2021, happy 2021 to your health, to safety, to getting back to in-person meetings. Thank you panelists. Thank you to my audience. Really appreciate having you guys on the show. Again, there's so many of you that have been loyal. Thank you, bye for now, cheers. Thank you, Michelle. Have a good day, everyone. Bye, everyone.